Hello and welcome to the For Her Empire podcast. I'm your host, Abby Malcha. And in this podcast, we address the personal and the business issues that female entrepreneurs face in their day-to-day lives. My guest, once again, <laughs> who is struggling to adjust <laughs> her computer, <Yes. laughs> it's Jamie Martin. Hi, Jamie. Hello, Abby. How are you? I'm fine. Still struggling? Good. No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you wonder if Jamie looks familiar, then yeah, she probably is. <laughs> yeah. Um, our last interview was about overcoming infertility, um, but today's interview is more business oriented. So today we're talking about leadership for um, finding your leadership style. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You just introduce yourself again. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Martin. I am a life and leadership coach who really focuses in on women, especially those who feel like they've been going and going and going for so long that they've, they've lost part of themselves in the process. Um, and so really what we do is we work to help shake things up. Well, allow yourself to put yourself first and, and, you know, really go after your dreams, whether that is in corporate America or personally, um, or cor- really corporate anything. Um, <laughs> I happen to be in America, so you yeah. know, it's a little easier to, that comes right off the tongue. Um, but really, it's one of the things that I find is that I find a lot of women want to talk about how to become a better leader and what does that even look like? Yeah. Uh, okay, so first question might be a bit ignorant, uh, but you just get in the waters. In the waters. So, um, so there is this. There is this um, phrase that's everywhere in books and movies about being a natural leader and all of that. Mm. <laughs> your face is your face right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's interesting because I I do think I think there's some people who do have natural tendency to be leaders, mm-hmm. right? But that doesn't mean that somebody can't grow into a leader, okay. right? And and that's really where we do ourselves a disservice um, because we we see some of these natural leaders, and we may actually what we call natural leaders. No, we may I was actually, ask what they look like, <laughs> right? Right. We we sit there and we're like, oh, they just know what they're doing, and they do it so easily, and they bring people together. You know, um, the first name that came to my mind was like Martin Luther King. You know, he just had a presence about himself. But if you were to start actually looking further back in any leader's history, there was some semblance of learning. You know, they may not have called it leadership development at the time, right? You know, they may have had a great mentor um, who helped them along the way, or their parents were natural, were, I want now you're saying, now I'm using natural leader. The parents <laughs> were great leaders in some way, shape or form. And so they instilled that in, in these people. And I would say one of the biggest things that leaders have is they have a strong why behind mm-hmm. really good leaders. And I want to be very clear when I'm talking about, when I use leaders, I'm talking about really good leaders. Okay. Um, we use the word leader in way too many ways um and i'm looking at leaders who understand how to bring out the best in people right who really want to make a difference in our lives their whoever they're leading lives um and have that heart piece of it involved whereas we we dub a lot of leaders who just happen to make a lot of money leaders <laughs> financial leaders right <laughs> yeah right exactly um so really i i would say from a a natural perspective it's it looks like it's natural but somewhere along the way they were doing a lot of work oh, okay okay and then and the asking um having like having like a strong why is it like why are you doing this um that kind of thing is that what the why question is Yeah, so a strong why is really about um, kind of, it, it goes to similar to your purpose okay. in life, right? And I think it's, it's bigger than who you are 
and you probably can't actually accomplish it in your lifetime, but it drives you every day, right? Okay. So for, for example, um, my, my why, and I, I, I really learned this through my coach training program, it's one simple word, home. And it's interesting because most people think of a why mm. as being a long sentence. Yeah. Right. World and it's got to be elaborate. <laughs> yeah. World peace in something that's very, very much outside grand of themselves, and right? all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Super grand. Um, and for me, like when I was working on it, it just landed. I was like, oh my God. Yes. You're right. Because when I think about how, uh, what drives me, I want everybody to have a sense of home. Okay. So whether that's a sense of home, like in their physical space, in their physical body, right? There's a lot of people who don't feel comfortable in their body. So how do they have a sense of home there? How do they build a community that feels like home? So those are all the things that drive me is really about making sure especially as they're, someone's interacting with me, mm -hmm. that they start to feel and connect a little bit more with all the words and all the feelings and sensations of what home means to, for them. Okay. Okay. And so that's, that's my why, right? Is I really want people to have that warm, fuzzy feeling as if they just came home, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. And so there's, there's a lot of ways to look at why, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's making sure you know what yours is. Okay. That's okay. critical. So like how, how can somebody find their why? Is there like a series of questions or like a, like a PDF question? Yeah, I just take out and like, that's it. And I, and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, for some people, yes. Oh. Um, and I actually just wrote an article um, that I posted on, on LinkedIn about intentional living that talks a little bit about some of the questions you can start asking yourself. Okay. Um, but really it's, I found it's best to work with somebody else to help reflect back okay. some of your, what you're talking about, because what happens is we get in our head and then we get to the place of judging ourselves. So similar to what you said earlier, Abby, the, the world peace, we sit there and we go, well, you know, that doesn't sound so like inspiring or realistic right? and to, or, or real. Well, or realistic. Yeah. But why doesn't have to be realistic? That's the beauty of why really? right? it doesn't have to be realistic. Oh yeah. No, no, not at all. Because yeah. that's what some of the great leaders have done, right? They have taken things that in, in that moment did not feel realistic and make them happen. Um, and they, they helped, they got, they got people around them to believe that it was possible. So it doesn't have to be realistic. And, and that's a great reason why it's important to work with somebody else to figure out your, your purpose and your why, because they can reflect back and say, Hey, are you, is that really what you feel at the core of your, your heart and soul? Mm -hmm. or are you projecting somebody else's expectations? Yeah, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that expectation. And we do it all the time. We all do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. a great way to make sure that you don't have your why end up being all Some about somebody is. else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, like, um, let's say um, I've just started a business or maybe you have a nine to five and you got promoted to a position where you're now managing others. So you might not be the leader on top, but you are the leader of that um, small, that yeah. small group. And uh, you want to be a good person. You want to be a good leader. You don't want to be this micromanaging person. That's just like yelling at that. People are talking about behind your back. Like she's such a douchebag. Right. You don't want to be that person. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so like, yeah. How do you do that without being too um, lenient, too soft? Yeah, I think the thing that I, I, I would recommend for anybody who is aspiring to be in management um, or is in management, just got promoted to management, yeah. all of the above, right? Um, I also, just to, to, to caveat, I do believe that everybody is a leader regardless of titer, title. So you can be a leader and 
still be an individual contributor contributor at your company, right? Um, it's it's more about how you're interacting with people and whether or not you are encouraging people to move forward on something. But for, for to answer your question, um, I would say it's it's really important to understand what you want to be as a leader. And there's a lot of different leadership styles out there. And so educating yourself a little bit on the different styles of leadership is really critical because it helps you understand like, okay, if I lean this way, I know that that's not the type of leader I want to be. If I lean this way, it's also not the type of leader that I want to be. And you can mix and match styles. They don't, you know, there's certain things that align with people on one style and then another style aligns with them also. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like you're checking a box. But the key to, to really making sure you're not a micromanager is listening. Thank you. That's an expected reply. <laughs> yeah, it's listening. Um, you know, it's really starting to observe what's going on with your team. Knowing and understanding what's both happening personally and professionally for them. Because for as much as we want to say that your personal life should not come into your professional yeah, world, yeah. it does. It does. Um, I had a, a mentor of mine who gave a story that I, I loved was he had a new manager who was like this, this individual is fit, like really struggling lately and they used to rock it. You know, they used to be the rock star of the group and they're struggling and I think I'm going to have to put them on a performance plan and, and went straight to like the harsh side of things. And my, my mentor asked him, he's like, well, have you talked to him yet about what's going on in life? Yeah. And cause he, he observed and he listened and he looked for different cues. Well, once they sat down to talk to this person, they found out that their, I think it was their mother was very ill. And so they had taken on caregiving oh. responsibilities with the mom. And so that period of time that they were struggling, it's because they were, they were juggling so much yeah. and hadn't really opened up at work about what was going on. And so they were able to actually work together to figure out, well, how do you do your best work at work and still have the energy and the support you need in order to support your mom? Yeah. You know, and those are the leaders that I think really show that they're not just micromanaging, right? Yeah. Um, because they're listening. They're really observing what's going on with the team. Um, I would also add, uh, don't focus just on the projects because that's a great way to be a micromanager is <laughs> if you do, if you do one on one time and all you're doing is going through a checklist of all their projects and asking for status. Your job. <laughs> well, it is, it is your job. You, you should know the status, but what I found is, is that oftentimes you already know the status as a manager. If you're going and looking beyond what's going on right? That your team has already given you an update. You know, you're not just finding out at their one-on-one -on -one what the status of the project is. Mm -hmm. You're already in tune because you listen, you ask questions, you observe. So their one-on-one -on -one can actually be about other issues, things that they're navigating, that they're struggling with, um, areas that they want to grow in their career, right? Instead of a status report yeah. and the more you build that rapport, the more likely they're coming to you before issues happen. Oh. So you don't have to use the one-on-one -on -one because they're saying, hey, do you have five minutes? I, I have a problem. <laughs> it's so personal. Right? Right? Well, no, it's not even the personal side. It's more like I have a problem with this project, oh. you know, or I'm really struggling at work with this individual. Like they're picking uh, up the phone. I'll snitch you. Having, <laughs> Right. And so instead of you having to be like, well, what's going on here? And why didn't we get this done? And why didn't we get this done? 
they're actually coming to you with it, you know, and that's because you've built that relationship with them that Mm -hmm. they, they trust that you, you trust them to do their job and let you know when something's going Mm -hmm. off the rails, so to speak. How, how, um, how to get to that relation that to that point without being invasive or nosy or like hi tell me about your life like how to get to that point <laughs> yeah 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 for <laughs> good good question <laughs> so i think the first key is, is is really sitting down and having one-on-ones i mean i i can't emphasize that enough i've seen way too many managers who um don't do it and don't do it frequent enough right so uh it's, it's such a critical piece of how you build a relationship is just getting together and talking, right? And really it's, it's starting simple. If you, if you don't, if you just stepped into the company and don't know the team, Mm -hmm. you simply ask them, well, tell me about yourself. And they'll start with the typical career side of things. Yeah. Right? Usually, usually what happens. Yeah. And that's okay. You want, you want to open the door, right? You want to open the door, let them talk about it, ask them questions like, oh, well, that's interesting. So why did you decide to change from this role to that role? So I can interview you right now. <laughs> well, it is a little bit because you're trying to get to know each other. Uh, but you also open the door to let them ask you questions. Oh. Right? Uh, so that, they Speaking from my experience with past um, plus employers, I wouldn't ask you a question. I'd be like, oh my God, why are they asking me this right now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something so, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then that's the, that's the key is, is even if you open the door, but you also let them know, hey, this is, you know, this is what my background was. And then you start to actually emulate what you're willing to share and what you want them to be able to share to you. Okay, okay, okay. So instead of going in and being like, so tell me about your family life and your problems, right? <laughs> right. It's more like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I just bought a house. And you start with those smaller things where you start to open the door to what your personal life is about so that they start to feel more comfortable sharing with you. Mm-hmm. And so when they're going through things and are interested in life, you can actually bridge that gap more. It's, it's very, I mean, it's the same as building a friendship, right? You're, that's you just all you're doing. <laughs> you're just building a friendship. Mm-hmm. Well, it, but it doesn't just happen, right? <laughs> no. You, you connect on some level, but you, you allow yourself to have conversation. I'm probably analyzing that to me. <laughs> <laughs> this thought it happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this time calling me first and asking, how do you become friends? How was our first like conversation like? Was I vulnerable enough? Were you vulnerable enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't want to overanalyze it by any stretch of the imagination, right? Like it's it's all about just being you, right? Being you and being open to being you. Mm-hmm. I think often when we're, we're trying so hard to be great managers is when we fall into some of the traps that we see managers fall into because they're so nervous, so nervous of failing as a manager, both from what their manager's expectations are and the team's expectations are, no. that's super easy. It's so easy to just go to the, I'm going to micromanage. Because yeah. that semblance of control. Yes. Right? Um, and so the key is to, to learn how to get comfortable with letting go of the control, but also being willing to open, open yourself up to your team so they feel like they can come to you with issues that are going on at work. You know, okay. um, that's, that's really what, what you're trying to build is that like, Oh, I know that John, we're just going to call him John for the sake of it. Okay. <laughs> will, uh, will always call me with him. He, he knows, he knows how to, how far he can go to solve something before it becomes so critical that now we have to have to hold 
you know, the whole company <laughs> yeah. on board to fix it. He knows when to come. And so giving that, that leeway and building that trust helps that, you know, John be able to say, okay, I know when I'm going to need to call my manager and, okay. and work through this together. Okay. And um, you had initially mentioned like um, different leadership styles and seeing if this works for you, if this works for you. So what leadership or, or what are the different leadership styles that is out there, I guess? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. One um, that I think we all know is command and control. And that tends to be the micromanager. Yeah. Yeah. The, the person who's like, this has to be done and it has to be done now. Right? They're hovering behind um, you. Exactly. They're hovering. <laughs> they, they get their hand, they end up taking the project away because it's not done the way they want yeah. it done. Right. Um, that is a very typical style of leadership. Um, and that's primarily because if you think about, where historically things have happened that's kind of almost had to be in the sense of how we were we were as humans in somewhat still survival mode for quite some time right mm -hmm. in the sense of like making sure you have food and a roof over your head and all of that um so when you're in that kind of survival mode there tends to be that command and control and then most if not all countries at some point in time had a, you know, a monarchy of some semblance. So a monarch, <laughs> monarchy is really a command and control, right? Yeah. At some level. Um, I mean, England now has the mix, <laughs> it's still there. but it's, it's still there. Right. Um, so, so we're used to thinking that's how things go. Yeah. And so it's really easy to fall into that kind of leadership style. Um, one of the one that I actually um, really attribute for myself is servant leadership and servant leadership is more about the partnership mm -hmm. with somebody and the ability to say, I'm going to both walk with you and like help you okay. on, on the backside. So command and control, the leader tends to be upfront yeah, and servant everywhere. leadership. Yeah. Servant leadership, you tend to be behind. Okay. So you're you're letting your your Ooh, team servant leadership. follow us first. Yeah. And so that's very cool, <laughs> right? Yeah, that sounds it's, very cool. <laughs> I know, right? It does. It does. Um, it and it's one of those where it's like it's it's there's a lot of different terms for servant leadership out there, and there's a couple other leadership styles that, for the life of me, my I can't pull the names out of my, my head um, that are very similar. And so it's just those, like I, I kind of mix and match them. I just mm -hmm. lump them for me as servant leadership, just to allow it to go forward. But that, that one, I, I really appreciate because it's, it really is about being a team. Okay. And so as a leader, you are willing to step into the mud with your team, you know, <laughs> with like, my team, not alone. <laughs> yeah, with your team, with your team. Right. And everybody's hands on deck if something happens. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not any more special than the, the person on my team. That means that I may be doing things that I did 20 years ago, but it needs to get done. Okay. And so, right. And helping on that front, or if you know, somebody on your team is super overwhelmed with everything on their plate, taking something off of it and being the one to do, do it, it. Yeah. you know, so that they can thrive and actually do their work effectively. Mm -hmm. um, it's also looking at, and this is where building that relationship comes in is looking at them as a whole person, mm -hmm. right? And saying that you're not just your job. Oh, right. So you're not just your job and what else is there? Where do you want to grow your career? You know, how, what's the timing look like? What are you interested in? How do we look beyond where you are today? You're sort of humanizing so that, them. So you're not just your humanizing. employee. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And what I, what I like about 
about that piece of it is, is that you get to understand where they really want to go in their career. And so you can start teeing that up for them, which is nice because most people, if they're, especially if they're not going to go this, this nice linear trajectory that we all think exists, <laughs> but they're, they're like, you know, I'm kind of interested in this other role in this other department. Yeah. You can start giving them opportunities that align with that. So, so an example, I had an employee that I worked with, um, for probably about five years okay. and you know, the first two years was just like us, you know, learning about each other and making sure she got it. She wanted to get into a more senior role. So I worked with her on that side of things, mm-hmm. but eventually she was like, you know, I really want to get into project management. Out of the blue. Really? <laughs> well, it wasn't out of the, it wasn't really out of the blue because we were, our role was similar to project management. Oh, okay. 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 So it was, it was very similar. Um, and so I sat down and, and looked for opportunities within the company for her to get exposed to that team and knowing that it might take a while because we didn't have any openings at that point. Yeah. Time. But by getting her exposed and allowing her to take on mini projects that helped that team out, she was able to step into the role once it did open out. Mm -hmm. In fact, the manager of that team had come to me and said, hey, do you think she will apply? Mm -hmm. And I said, I will make sure she applies. (laughs) Because we've been talking about this for years. He just lost a a team member, but yay. Yeah, right? I know. I lost a team member, but you know what? um. I I was so proud of her, you know, and it, it made my day and week. And in fact, I'm still talking about it. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So I'm still so proud of her and in the work she put in and the fact that she was willing to say to me, I want a different role. And we were able to work together to help her figure out how to really get there, you know, and that's, that's a lot about leader, what leadership is, is forget about whether or not you're going to lose somebody hmm. because you should lose somebody, right? Uh, you, should be, you should be working towards allowing them to grow and, and even allowing them to take your own job. Hey, what? Back up. Grow. What? <laughs> right? Yes. Oh. Take your own job. <laughs> yeah. It, it, <laughs> Because hopefully you're also growing, uh, okay. right? The, the key is, is that hopefully both, everybody's growing. And so you're moving into a new role. They can then step into your role, uh, okay. right? So you're, you're really looking towards that bigger picture of, of what it can, it can look like. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you're actually feeding the organization more. Okay. Right. Versus if you were to keep, want to keep your whole team. Stay, Devin, stay. Stay, right? <laughs> but again, that's the control side of things. That's the yeah, control. but the control side makes sense, too. Um, um, there is, I, I, I don't know if, if in, in America the saying is there, that if you want something done right, you do it yourself. Ah. But, <laughs> but guess what that means? You're what? doing it all yourself. You're doing everything yourself. Yeah, then you have to like... Because follow and monitor your team so they do it exactly the way you wanted to get them. <laughs> well, so that, that, that's interesting. That's really interesting because um, you can actually miss out on an opportunity for it to be done better. <laughs> right? Um, I, it took me, and to be fair, it took me a while to let go. Uh. So to be fair, it, it takes time, especially if you go from individual contributor to a manager and no one's really grooming you um, and no one had groomed you before. Yeah, it takes it time to let to go it. and you get used to it um, and you get used to doing things your way. Yeah. But your way doesn't necessarily mean it's the best way. Uh, you can trust your way with zero risks involved. <laughs> well, but... Uh, are there zero risks? <laughs> at least I can, I, can, I can, like, I have this baseline that at least I'm going to miss this. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but then why have a team? 
<laughs> just as the other person. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so you have a team, but you do all the work because you want it done your way. Yeah. They can do it by the way as well. <laughs> well, and then that's that's what's interesting too is is that the more you let go, the more they you know, and you let them do it their way the more that you actually start to see different opportunities within the team as to what can help the whole team move forward. Um, and it may simply be, you know, I, I had a way that I, I visualized how we were going to present information mm -hmm. to the organization at my last company. And, you know, we tried it out and it didn't quite work. And luckily my team was willing to say, Hey, I've got some ideas. Yeah. Awesome. Go for it. Okay. You know, <laughs> we, we, I gave you the, the starting point. Go ahead. Let's take see it from here. It, that works. Yeah. Take it from here. Let's see how it works. You know? And then as a result, we were able to constantly evolve. And because we were communicating and talking and being like, well, I, I've heard this from some people about the presentation. And how do we incorporate that piece in? It allowed us to actually start moving our presentation from a place that was like just okay into enough to being able to actually be informative mm. where people were starting to walk out and we were getting engagement in, in the presentation, right? They were walking out with information, not walking out of the presentation. Okay. <laughs> they were able to walk out with information <laughs> they were engaged in the presentation right and so they they got informed at a completely different level than where we started mm -hmm. but had i not given that up a little bit to, to my team and said hey okay so here's here's our initial framework what do we need to do differently mm -hmm. uh, so but, that allows um, a lot more evolution uh, okay i don't know if this actually exists um like a leader takes like the um, the fall for a team if things do not quite go right. But then, it, if if you know you're gonna take the fall for something, not so advocate for micromanaging. But I can understand that if I'm gonna take a fall for this, I might as well make sure it's done my way, so I know it's completely my fault, <laughs> and not because I gave you leeway. Ah, ah, so so that's that's interesting. It's um. That's where you have to shift your mindset from it's about me to it's about us. Uh, and my job as a leader is I, I, no matter what my team does, I'm responsible for it. Oh boy. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it, it's big. And that's why leadership is, it can be challenging is that really as a leader, you are in charge of all of it and it's okay you want to let go because you want to be able to say yes i'm going to protect you right? <laughs> <That> protects <And> you. <laughs> i am right like i'm i'm going to protect you but at the same time more often than not yeah you're going to take the fall but if you built up enough you should be building up relationships just not with your team but with your peers and the people above you mm. that you can have a very simple conversation, right? That says, okay, so yes, this was my team's fault. I take full responsibility for it. Here's what we're going to do to change it. And this, you've already talked to your team about it, right? So you've already sat down with your team. We've just talked about what, what wrong, why did it go wrong? We've come up with a plan to, to mitigate it together um, so that when you do have those conversations with other people about what happened, you, while you're taking the fall and saying, yes, it's my problem, oh, that hurts. but here, here, here's what we decided to do to fix it. Mm, you know, so you're presenting the solution as well. You're presenting the solution as well. And you're also calling out that your team helped build the solution <laughs> so you take the fall you take the fall but your team now gets raised up 
because oh, hey, guess what? We came with us. We came. We came up with a solution. You're part of your team. <laughs> no. <laughs> when do I get credit for all of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, so so that's interesting. It's it, it's part of it, and this is because I'm, I'm I attribute myself to to servant leadership. So that's again, that's where the styles of leadership come into play. Um, but when you're when you're thinking about leaders, the great leaders are willing to take the fall. Okay. <laughs> Not right? <idea> yet. <laughs> They're willing to take the fall. But that's why you have to work at it. It takes practice. It takes, you know, really having a great mentor or a coach that helps you see and navigate through that. Um, because like with you, Abby, I would probably sit down and, and be like, well, why does that scare you so much? You know, why, why for anybody. does it scare you? <laughs> Well, well, why, 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 why does it matter? And what does the fall look like to you, right? Those are the questions I would dig into oh. because <laughs> more often than not, we go, we go straight to the, oh my God, I'm going to get fired. No, it's not, it's not like I'm going to have a failure attached to my record. <laughs> <laughs> I want <Yeah>. to be perfect. <laughs> uh, well, then we would, we would definitely be talking about the perfection side of things. <laughs> there is that one person who is perfect in the world and and again oh I was one of those I, I am a I would like to say a practicing recovering perfectionist recovering still recovering practicing, though I'm practicing <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but like those are the things that we would work through so that you could actually break through and and own your own leadership and not be afraid of what the what ifs or the I'm going to get in trouble right um yes at times leaders get yelled at it happens and sometimes it has nothing to do with your team it has nothing to do with you you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> right so it's how do you fight right yeah but it's it's learning how to navigate those things so that when it does come to the fact that like, oh, your team didn't deliver on something that on time or in the way people expected, you can, you can de-escalate uh, the rest mm -hmm. of the organ organization in a way so that you can move everyone forward, right? The key to leadership is that you don't want to get so stuck into the political side of stuff and you want to move people from the oh my God, everything's on fire to how do we solve this? Mm. How do we move forward from this, right? Um, and that's at every level. Mm. Every level of, of leadership, you want to build that skill um, because that's where when you get stuck here, and this is where I see the, the fear of, um, of being the one to take ownership of something, and, and taking the fall, so to speak, this becomes a hot mess pretty quick. But if you can diffuse that and say, okay, so I'm taking responsibility from this. Now you don't have the conversation that lingers in a lot of organizations of who's at fault, <laughs> right? It also means that, you know, your team, especially if everybody's doing a great job and somebody made one little mistake, doesn't get branded like that person doesn't get branded as the person who caused X, Y, Z, yeah. because that can live with them for a long time. Whereas if you own it and you, you'll own a lot of things as a leader, people will forget. They'll get so messed up with everything else that it, it'll be long history because something else will happen and somebody else will take the fall. Right. Um, but once you just de-escalate de that conversation, everybody gets to move forward. You get to say, well, what happened? And you get to move through talking about what the process failure was, not the individual failure, right? And that, that's key because I think all, when we're in this mode of responsibility and who did what, we often want to point a finger to somebody. Yeah, it just, you re it's more you to re relieving in a way. If you can just have someone to point the blame at, 
there's something um, relaxing about it. Something, it's like a relief. Like, it's not me. It's not my fault. I'm safe. <laughs> but what if, what if it was, if you were able to take it so that it didn't, it wasn't about somebody, but it was about a process? Uh, like so instead of pointing else. so like um if you have a process for closing a sale mm -hmm. right and the person followed the process but somewhere along the way the process isn't you know maybe they were brand new and the process isn't clear enough and they made one little step that that jump that didn't actually make sense that everybody else in the organization knows but yeah. is missing in the process well it's not their it's not their fault it's no one's fault it was the process that was broken now you can fix the process oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay if you say so <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll have lots of conversation <laughs> i shall grow into becoming a better leader <laughs> So like so how how exactly um can i can can women can women sort of like find what leadership style works for them like you, yeah like, i yeah. Let's continue. i would say the 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 first thing i did and i recommend this for every every woman and and man <laughs> out there anybody is look at yeah everybody look at who you hated as a manager <laughs> I mean, the list. <laughs> because you know you don't want to be that right and 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 figure out what it is about what they were doing and how they were presenting themselves in the team that made you go "Ooh, nope don't want to do that because nope back away from me <laughs> yeah back away from that because then you'll start to see if you're doing those behaviors and you can go oh whoa, whoa, wait wait i don't want to be that manager right um so that that's number one it's a lot easier to pick those out than the great ones. Yeah. Um, I think we all have had bad managers, so yeah. it's really easy to be like, that, yeah, that oh, one. I still remember, I don't want to like, two cameras, an email which read on the line bold, like, <laughs> highlighted, like, how many girls are my emails? Like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. So you, you know you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, there, so there's a couple other ways um look at the second one is, is look at the managers you actually admire and look at really deep dive deep into what was it about them that you admired you know and start working through that and then the third one is really read a lot of books oh because there's a ton of books on leadership out there and you know if you start to see something in articles um you know, books, articles, podcasts, all of that around yeah. leadership, because that's going to really give you that sense of, okay, so this is, this is how different leaders behave. And you can start to say, oh, these attributes go with the same bucket as my, the good manager. These other attributes seem to fall into the ones I didn't like. And so you'll start to be able to take from from different styles and and create your own potentially or you know pick <laughs> of them pick what, what this for you and yeah. put it together together and be like here's my style right so m while i i attribute to servant leadership i'm not a full servant leader right i have attributes that i pull from other leadership styles but because majority of my style is servant leadership i call it servant leadership right so you don't have to pick a style and kind of be like oh i have to emulate all of this right yeah. you you get to pick and choose um but i would say that that's those are the best places to look and also the last piece is for those people who you appreciate start to go talk to them about well how did you learn like what i see you do this why did you do that? And and be like get them to be in conversation as a mentor for you. Because that's a great way of being able to start to figure out how you can start practicing your leadership okay. by having those conversations. 
okay, 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 makes sense. And so, um, <clears throat> so let's say, um, um, Abby or um, someone listening to this came to you, um, so you to coach them to become a, come to become a better leader. Um, what's what's that process like? Yeah, so the process is, I mean, first off, you're, you're going to be uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> as, I should have told you that. has been this whole conversation. <laughs> you're, you're going to get uncomfortable. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of tough questions. But the process really is looking at getting crystal clear first on what your vision is. You know, why do you want to be a leader? What's important to you about that? Um, because again, that why is such a critical anchor for everything we do in life in general, but also for being a leader. Um, so we'll get really crystal clear on that. And then we, we would actually talk and work through like, what's the, what's the strategy for you figuring out what your style is, you know? And I would actually guide them through some of the, the conversation we've already had a little bit of like, well, who were the people that you knew you didn't like? why didn't you like them um and and likely go a lot deeper than you would probably go on your own right mm -hmm. because you know you mentioned the did you see my email <laughs> oh my well, god he was like that right? <laughs> 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 yeah and, but i would i would actually go a little further with you on that instead of being like okay so we know you don't want to be the person who sends the did you see the email well what what did it make you feel annoyed how did you feel <laughs> how would you want to do like how would you have wanted him to do it differently right so uh, we would work through a lot of those <laughs> questions so then you could see like oh okay so this while i don't want to do that and i know i don't want to do that now we could actually take it and actually bring it to the positive side of what a good leader would look like because we've dug deep enough into what occurred so that you can create a new way Okay, okay. And uh I sympathize <laughs> a lot with like <laughs> micromanagers because from I can sort of understand why they're so annoying. Like I mean I, I can understand why they're so annoying. I mean being on the receiving end of it it's so freaking annoying. But being, but being on the other side I can understand why. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> are there other people you've met that had like the same mentality I know about like micromanagers? We don't like them but we understand them. Um, I, I don't know if I've had somebody who said that they understand them. I have had somebody say that they wanted a micromanager. So I did manage one person who, when she left, she was like, I really just wish you would have micromanaged me. And I was yeah. like, okay, okay well, <laughs> that is not my style. <laughs> Get your ass together. Right, right. But she, she loved, she loved just knowing all the little steps of the process and being able to like talk to somebody about it. She wanted that level of detail. Oh, and so okay. as an employee, and this is important as a manager, like had I known that, I could have adjusted my style a little bit more for her, right? Had I actually known that she wanted that. Oh, okay. um, and that's part of being a leader. And even though you may have one style, you may have to change it a little oh. bit for somebody else. Okay. Right. So, um, but so yeah, I've, I've had somebody say, I want to, I wish you were a micromanager, <laughs> but I haven't had somebody say, I understand micromanager. I understand um, them. <laughs> I, I, but I think, I think, but I think there's a lot of people who do understand them, right. They just haven't verbalized it necessarily. Yeah. They just don't like them. <laughs> But when you think about when you step into a manager role, I mean, we talked about it earlier, it's, it's that fear. And so you, and mo more times than not, new managers have not been trained to be managers, right? No one has developed that skill for them. So they're stepping into this new role. No one's doing anything to help guide them through it. And so as a result, they're going to what they know. Yeah. What they know is, I have a list of projects. I need to make sure that they get done. I need to make sure they get done on time. I'm gonna monitor your they know. to get it done. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna be over your shoulder making sure it gets done because I know that that's my job. Yeah. Right. Um. Whereas, at, at, as if we were more intentional as a society about how we groom leaders, 
we would see far less micromanagers step into a management role because we would have already groomed them to understand that bigger picture and understand that there's more to their job than necessarily just hitting the milestones. Yes, we want you to hit the milestones. We want you to make sure all this gets done, but there's a bigger picture in it. Yeah. And, and we don't do that great of a job. So that's part of the reason why, Abby, you're uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> with some of this is that, that, you know, people haven't, you weren't, you haven't been groomed and, and no one has, most people yeah. haven't. I would say probably 95% of leaders were not groomed, you know? So uh, it's, it's understandable really to just... say, I get them. I get yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I, mean, I I don't understand sending me like five emails in one season and like having bold and underlined and like making the fonts red to emphasize your points. Like I don't understand <laughs> the part. But I I, yeah. I I I guess if you're being pressured from like from like upper level, you may want to push that pressure on those underneath you. Right, right. Yeah. You understand their intention. Yeah. It's just the way you went about yeah. it was annoying. <laughs> Right. And who knows, their boss might be doing the same thing to them. Okay. Right? No. Don't do that to somebody else then. It's just so annoying. Right? Like, I would go yeah. out of my way just to piss him off because I'm like, ah, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> yep. I, 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 I hear you. <laughs> and um, I know um, 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 movies, especially like um, superhero movies, the, the way they picked leaders it's almost like um authoritarian in a way it's it's some of like dictatorship in a pretty way in a pretty life but still dictatorship <laughs> so, yeah. so apart, apart from that um okay, that, that that does contribute to how we see leaders as this um i have the final say when i say yes it's when i say no it's no my way or the highway we sort of like um uh, glamorized that sort of like yeah. making that look like what leadership is. But apart from that, are there any other um, leadership stereotypes out there that you want to smash? Um, I would say, oh, that's, that's a really good question. Um, well, I, I would say that you have to have it together to be a leader because <laughs> most, lead, most great, great leaders don't. Um, they they are doing work constantly to figure out how they want to show up in the world, who they want to be, and they're constantly in practice. So, um, you know, they, they don't have it together. <laughs> they just keep working at it, right? Um, number two, <laughs> because I think that this is a stereotype that still unfortunately exists that you're a white male a white male and and i've actually had somebody say tall white male <laughs> okay you you don't have to have any of those attributes. Attributes. <laughs> right you, you don't have to have any of those attributes right like you can you can be short you can be female you can be african-american you can be hispanic you can be every any anything to be a leader right um you, the other stereotype is a title. You do not need a title to be a leader. I think that's one worth repeating. You don't need to be have a title yeah. to be a leader. Um, we think that that's the case, but some of the best leaders that I've seen are the people who are not managers. They're they're not at the executive table. They're they don't have a C in their title. Mm. All they're doing is making sure that the people around them are able to move forward mm -hmm. and see a vision. And sometimes it's just a fellow teammate mm -hmm. who's doing that, Ooh. you know? Yeah. So those would be, I, I'll, I'll leave it with those three. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is there, is there any question I should have asked before we like move to the last part, yeah. which is how people can work with you? Any oh, questions? How do, uh, no, I think, I think you covered it all. <laughs> I mean, granted, we, we should have a, a conversation about what, what scares you about <laughs> taking the fall, but that, that we don't need to do. We don't need everybody on the call <laughs> to hear. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, so, uh, for people listening to this, and and they want to become better leaders, how can they work with you to discover their leadership style and to be less like <sighs> emails? Yeah, like, <laughs> that leader, less dictatorship. Yeah. <laughs> like, like manager. Yeah. So they can they can find me at um, www.jamiemartincoaching.com um, and schedule a discovery call. And what that will do is we'll we'll actually dig into a lot more about what what they want in life, and then I can actually recommend um, a program from one of my programs to to help them move forward that fits best for where they're at and what's going on in life. Okay, okay. Ooh, um, the the website will be in the video and in the description awesome. below, so you can just check that out as well. <laughs> Great, sounds good. <laughs> Hey, thank you for with busting you, my, my leadership beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I think I need a little bit more work with you, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I shall slowly get there. Right yeah. now, I still don't think yeah. for any, anything. <laughs> oh, oh, <yeah>. <laughs> It's just nice having this interview with you, by the way. And you're glowing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Who's oh, glowing? Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody keeps saying that. I'm like, well, it's the, it's the sun coming through the window. Oh, no, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs>